Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, so, I'm working from home today. It's the weekend. Nobody's in the office anyway. On my lunch break. I just got done watching Wendy's video. Um, I really love Wendy. She is freaking awesome. Uh, and, uh, we're both trying to do no buy years. I guess I I need to come clean at this point. I knew it wasn't gonna I knew it wasn't gonna take. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to uh go the whole year cuz I'm serious when I say I hate rules. Um they there's too much pressure. They make ugh, I just I I don't like it. I don't I don't like it. <laughs> and so now that I've broken um this rule now I can exist in the in the no no buy sphere happily knowing that there's no oh my god this is so bad I want to hit stop but I'm not going to <laughs> um yeah so what did I do um I watched I watched a video by Maria Meliora She's the lady down in Florida. I have problems with her sometimes. <laughs> because most recently she's been like selling her stuff, like decants. And so she's been talking about a lot of stuff that she's putting online. So <laughs> she's not shilling for other companies, she's shilling for herself. But she was talking about... Uh, Mona Diorio. I don't know what I said. And I kind of got interested in it. And in her, the story, I didn't know, I, I didn't know anything about her. All I knew, the only thing I knew about the company was, this is how I know something is intriguing to me. Wendy has a bottle of hers and so does Rich Mitch. They're kind of on opposite spectrums of, of the people that I watch. And for both of them to enjoy a perfume or a brand says that there's something there, right? Because everybody has different tastes in, like, what they actually... Like, you know, Rich is more, you know, the, the stereotypical masculine. And I would say Wendy's more the stereotypical feminine um, buyer and lover. And so, so both of them have talked about the company before. And from this video I watched, I found out that this lady is, um, this lady, she died like in her early 40s, she died in 2011. She apparently was a protege of sorts of Edmund Runitska. For those of you who are watching my channel, you know exactly who he is. The, the famed, the famed perfumer, you know, one of the, one of the few who actually had a name back in the day, Teramez, and of course on now I'm blanking on all of the very famous stuff that he did, but he's, he's, he's famous, right? I mean, he was very famous when perfumers were not famous. Uh, and so apparently, so he and she went, Maria started talking about this whole, how she was like, uh, being trained, like, she was an apprentice for 15 years, although I don't know how that's possible. She was born in 69, and I thought Rudnitska died in, like, the mid to late 90s? Is that wrong? But she, like, met him up with him in her late teens, I think. Which would have, le which would have been, like, in the late 80s. So I don't know how the, the timing ends up. But anyway, it seems like he was pushing her to be more of a renaissance um, woman, if you will. You know, think broadly, think think philosophically. Philosophically? That doesn't sound right. And that just, it struck me as like, this woman who was, you know, who was, who was, who was um, bucking the trend, if you will. And 
I, I, from that video, I didn't get half of what was. It was actually more interesting. So she had a really good reputation, you know, when she died. So apparently, the stuff that people like I've heard, I've heard of Vinny and Queer, and some of those others. Oh, I don't remember. It, it was the it was the collection like right before she died, and apparently, she had to. I won't say dumb down her stuff, but she had to make it a little bit more palatable for the general audience because her, the real stuff, or not her real stuff, but her first stuff wasn't um, received so well with the masses and a lot of it got discontinued and now, oh my God, I went looking online because I, I decided that I wanted to see what her stuff was about, right? So I ended up, oh my God, that stuff's expensive. I'm... I bought a, ha a partial bottle of freaking Vini, which is, I mean, I did it yesterday. And so I don't have it with me yet. It was like 260 bucks or something like that. Oh my God. This, like, one of her first stuff, Nuit Noir, was like $800. And then the Musk, so that was one of, and then there was a Musk bottle for, I don't know, 400 450 Thank God, like, I didn't, like, I was tempted almost. But I didn't, I didn't do that. I just wanted to have a bottle of hers just because her story was intriguing. Um, I, I, you know, I was, I was moved by the story. But anyway, so that's where I am. I fell, I fell off the wagon already and now I can begin my actual no buy, I guess. <laughs> it, we'll see how it goes. Um, so another thing, so I was thinking about, so, uh, so I got out my perfumes that I've, worn this last week because I, <laughs> how do I say this I don't I got freaked out by the fact that my last two videos <laughs> for me like one of them went above 100 views I don't get that like like in the in the last one was 75 and it kind of freaked me out I'm like holy crap people are watching my videos but honestly like I just want this to be like <laughs> this is like this is just a this is just for me honestly and I don't I want this to be kind of an art project of sorts just to record my relationship with perfume I'm assuming I'm not going to have this fascination and love of this hobby for the rest of my life it's just not the way I do stuff <laughs> you know I, I mean clearly I've I've had this fascination for a few years, but I'm somebody who will find hobbies and then go off of them and find a different hobby. I mean, I'll still, I'll, I'm happy that I have all this perfume and I'll still love it, but I'm, and I think this is my first step of trying to stop buying and stop acquiring and just appreciate what I have. And I think this is the first step towards getting out of this, a hobby that takes up too much of my mind space, actually. <laughs> I'm really... I'm really a nerd <laughs> and I think I've got a couple hobbies that I or I got a couple things that I think I want to strive for I want to learn math <laughs> how dumb is this right I really want to learn high math um, when I was a kid I always wanted to be an astronomer or astrophysicist or something and that never happened but maybe I'll go do it and I will have the basis by learning the math I don't know I'm, I'm like I said I'm a nerd Anyway, so this is just me trying to, uh, yeah, capture my relationship with perfume. And a lot of that, a lot of people talk about perfume, right? And they either will explain the notes. For me, it's just kind of like, perfume's just a, is just a, it's just a lifting point for me to start thinking about other stuff. Sometimes it's very banal stuff related to perfume and st some stuff it's like higher level like words with capital letters thoughts that are created or whatever you know what I'm saying or if you don't it doesn't matter <laughs> um yeah so anyway I thought I'd just really quickly show my week just to understand where I've been this last week oh crap I uh don't remember exactly the order yeah I kind of do so on the 1st of January, I wore the Apopanax. The next day, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, because this came in the this came in my mail from the, my first day back at work. 
and so I wore this that night. So this is one of the this is one of the ones that I had in the in in the queue that I had bought right before the end of the year. And so this is Sergio Tones a la Noe. So for those of you who have followed my channel, you know that I really love Jasmine. And Eve Spider Smells. I miss her so much. Like she she also had a love of Jasmine. Um, she's gone on to bigger and better things. Like she's had a she's had a baby and she's living her life and she doesn't post. I do see her randomly on sometimes Instagram. I'll see her liking some other posts. Um, I'm not on Instagram a whole bunch. Like, I don't know, I go on every couple of days maybe. I can scroll for, you know, five, ten minutes. But I, like, and so I, very first impressions. I, I mean, I wore this that night and then the next day. But this is, this is a pretty strong solo floor of a jasmine. I, none of this... I have no notes. I was fascinated by the by the fact that I realized people take notes. Maybe that's what I should do with all my perfume. Start taking notes as far as what comes up in my head and you know, and my perceptions of these things, as opposed to me trying to remember when I'm trying to talk about it on video. But this one is really. I, I think I'm really lucky. I always talk about the Jasmine Sarai's Jazz, and that's a straight like. Uh, that's a I really love that solo floor it's almost a solo floor and this is almost a solo floor but it's got it it's almost got a shampoo character to it I'm definitely gonna uh, I'm definitely going to um revisit this for sure I'm sure at one point I'm, at some point I'm gonna like compile all my jasmine like solo floors and um really get into them but I think there's I think there's citrus at the top, but there's something about it. I don't know if it's I'm sure there's probably some white musk in here giving me that shampoo something about it. But it's but it is definitely an indolic jasmine, which I really I really like. So I'm gonna a couple days. And then a couple days after that I wore I this is Oda Suit, I talked about it whatever video I talked about it, you know, recently. I really like this stuff. It's so I, when I was describing it, sorry, Anikutal Odesud. Um, when I was describing it before, I was talking about how the citrus is all the citrus is in it. Um, it's like they're, they're they're like grounded in the oak moss, and I still haven't looked to see if there's patchouli. But I did. I, what I realized about it is, I'm pretty sure why it makes me so happy is the pedigree. I really like bitter in perfume. I realize that. And the pedigree does it. And I, this stuff is, I really like this stuff. Really, really like this stuff. Um, so I wore that a couple days in a row. Um, I think that night, so here's another, so I, I told you I got a whole bunch of stuff in the mail um, that was coming. So not a whole bunch, but a fair number of bottles and so this is chronotope um nanas so i had gotten um a, a sample pack from them of, of his new stuff so i i had smelled a lot of the because i own the playa linda and the oh i can't remember what's the one where he's uh walking through spain on the on the Santiago Compostela. Um, yeah, I've got those, and those are like his old stuff. And then there was a whole bunch of new stuff that he was, that he came out with, and I heard them on Liz Odrin's podcast, and I got a whole bunch of his stuff, and th they were, like, I did, I didn't, I just found that packet not too long ago, and that's why I ordered this stuff because I had forgotten how much. Um, I really like this, which is weird to say because it's got, a, it's definitely got Nang Nang in it and I'm not the biggest fan of Nang Nang, but what this one is, so, it's so, it's so Nanas, right? So it sounds like bananas and indeed it has that, you know, you know that taffy candy that you have when you're a kid and that banana, fake banana flavor, it's in here. And there's also civet and ylang ylang. But it just melds into this. It's it's really, it's so creamy and 
and it's 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 happifying. <laughs> I just made that word up clearly. It makes you happy. Like I guess it makes me happy because I'm such a ice cream fan. Now granted, I don't like banana flavored ice cream, but it reminds me of ice cream. And also, I think I remember when I first got this, it lasted literally for like less than an hour. And I only wore this that night and I fell asleep. So it probably still only has an hour lasting power. I'll probably have to, I'm gonna have to try this again. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm really happy with this sucker and I'm really happy that I bought it because I had forgotten about it for many months. And uh, yeah, I was happy for this one. Uh, so this is one of the ones I decanted, Topic Blonde. I'm really not ready to talk about it. I really do like this sucker. I'm really not, I'm not prepared to talk about it. It's, it's, it's almost like, it's moving. It's like earth moving. It's earth, it's like, yeah, I'm not ready to talk about it. <laughs> I really, I love this stuff so much, but I will talk at a later date when I'm ready, because I'm just not. So, this morning, this morning, I've been thinking about this sucker for quite a while. This is my Kutsia Teatro alla Scala. And, so I vaguely remember people, when I bought this, I feel like I bought this in like late 21. And I remember looking at videos then, I don't, I haven't watched any of those videos since, but I thought, people thought this was very much an animalic thing. And, you know, it's an, it's definitely an amber, it's a, I, I went and looked at the notes briefly this morning, and the only animalics that I saw were civet, and beeswax can sometimes pull animalic. Usually I don't see, I don't feel the animalic in beeswax. But this is yet another example of civet not reading as animalic to my nose. It just gives it some full body. I always find, so this is, uh, it's Critzia, right? So it's, it's, um, it's Italian house. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm ready to talk about this one either. It's, I mean, these vintage well, this one clearly, I don't remember when this was from. 20s, 10s, 30s, the Topic Blonde. And this is Corone, by the way, if you didn't know. This one is from, it's not that old. It's like from a, from 91, maybe? Am I making that up? 81? I don't know. It, I don't think it's that old. Maybe Oh, maybe Crazy was the 91 one. Maybe this is a bit older then. But it's just really got the, it's, it's the, it's the old school, it's like an animal like sheep row, right? But it feels old. It feels like it belonged in the 20s. And I know it wasn't from the 20s because this, this was only created by, the house was only created like in the 50s or 60s. I don't, I think the founder only recently, relatively recently died in the, I don't know, in the last 20 years. So, yeah, so this, but this definitely feels like a, like something from the 20s. It really does. It's, I should probably get all, yeah, all these, th like, these are so hard to comprehend in my mind. It's kind of the way Salome does too. It's just, there's something mind bending about it and it's so good. Like I don't wear them that much, probably because it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's cra they're crazy good. Oh my God, I, yeah. And this is, what is this? Is this Eau de Toilette or Eau de, yeah, this is Eau de Toilette. Actually, I don't know if it comes in the other plate. Because I do have another bottle of it. It's a splash bottle. It's, it's the long one. I'll have to get that one out too. And see. But anyway, maybe when I'm more prepared to think about it. Okay. So I've been talking about Gutals. So today, so when I came home, I had a bath. And so I reapplied some. I reapplied my one of my Anique Gutals. This is Eau de Camille. So I did that in... Thinking about the fact that I I do want to make a video with all my Gutals. I've got like 10 or 11, I think. And I, I kind of want to talk about it. So I, so I brought this out because I wanted to get my nose on some of them. I don't want to talk. 
the you know these videos are just like me talking off the top of my head I kind of want to prepare for like a video where I show a house and like do a little bit of a deeper dive if I if I'm even possible if it's even possible for me but Oda Camille so this is one that so I just looked at the notes right before filming this and this is the one it's got Ivy what are the notes listed from and this was from Frank Brantica but you know they can be a little bit suspect sometimes in there but Ivy grasses honeysuckle whatever syringa is syringa and false jasmine I find those so the ivy is the same ivy I'm like almost positive maybe that's not true but Eider Antler from January Sun Project there's it's it's a it just feels fake it feels fake greenery to me it always does and this one and this bottle in particular and I don't know this is one of her early this is one of her early bottles Gutals and uh yeah, like she named Oak Eau de Camille, like that's the name of her daughter who took over the house, and but the, it was made like when the ki when she was like a very young person, like five, six, seven years old, something like that, and I, I guess the kid played in in fields, <laughs> and but this, it, so I don't know how old this bottle is, is what I'm trying to say. So I mean, it was from like the early '80s or mid '80s is when it was composed, and I can't, I don't know how to date, um, Gutal bottles. But this is, uh, yeah, it comes off, like, when you first spray it, it comes off as something old. Like, one of those, like, you know, you, you, for those who know vintage perfumery, it's got that vintage vibe to it. Which, a lot of times, that vintage whatever is very, um, I think it's, 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 uh, it's telling of its chemicals that are no longer allowed in perfumery. <laughs> And I don't know what they are, but then it turns into something more, even though I consider it very artificial green, I, I think Gutal, I think everybody, well not everybody, but a lot of people talk about Gutal being very, um, natural smelling. And Gutal isn't like completely natural smelling to my nose in any of their stuff. It's, but it's close. <laughs> It's, it's weird. It's, I guess it's her DNA. I guess it's the house DNA in, in a way. In that it's very natural, but not quite. Like in all of them that I've smelled, pretty much. It's like that. Which is kind of cool. I mean, because clearly they're not all natural. I mean, it's not an all natural house. Um, but yeah, I, I and this is so, sorry. The, the, the overwhelming character to me is like this bitter. Again, there's a bitter. I love bitter. I love pedigree. And I love, I think I like Artemisia when I see it. I like... What other bitter notes? Galb galbanum. Galbanum. I've never heard of that. Um, yeah, anyway. I really like this one for its bitter whatever. I don't know. Anyway, that's been my... Oh, man, 23 minutes. Ugh. I thought I was going to come in here for 10 minutes. Okay. Bye. How do I end these? Go forth and prosper. Because... I don't just say that for you guys. <laughs> I say that with my work group too. Oh well. Go forth and prosper.